Welcome back everyone to uh, this last video on chapter 2. So, um, let's have a little recap. So, up till now, there's a few tools we've used. There's a resultant vector that's equal to the sum of all the forces. Forces are sliding vectors. That describes the way they can be repositioned. Remember we talked about uh, along the line of a force. Okay, and uh, moments So a moment about O, and this R is a resultant. So it's the resultant moment about the point O, which is the sum of all the moments about O. And this really shouldn't have a sum there. and moments and couples are free vectors. They affect the entire object so they can be moved anywhere on the object. So like if you have this rectangular object here. Oh, let's make that a little neater. Uh, here, there. Okay, and we're gonna do that again. Right here. Those look pretty similar. Okay, so um, in this one on the left, we have a moment here. And in this case, the moment is applied here. All right. And you can think of this as um, Oh, here's a an arm coming out of this, and uh, there's a force applied to that. Okay, so the force applied to the arm produces a moment, and whatever the mechanism is. Okay, these two are equivalent. Moment does not have a location. It is a tendency to have the whole object rotate. So, what that says is that M, it, it helps you to solve the problem because M can be positioned anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere on the object. Okay. Um, oh, well, little caveat. As long as we keep magnitude and direction the same. And direction the same. Okay, so the thing about force that differs from that is force has a location that determines the magnitude and direction of the moment. That's, that's the moment arm basically, right? So um, a force 
has a location that determines the magnitude and direction of the moment produced. But moment has no specific location, right? Moment is, as we said before, a free vector and applies everywhere on the object. Okay, so let's use that. So we're going to take this funky looking bracket. Um, rigid attachment down below. Um, I'm going to start here and go up to here and do another one of those it basically can be like a cross just so you know ahead of time what we're getting at here and then i'm going to go out to the sides and again these off uh, let's fix that up a little bit okay um, almost done here two more little lines from here to there doesn't like little lines apparently. I'll have to fix that up. Okay, so we'll go back here to our little eraser and clean that up. Clean that up. Okay, there. Okay, good enough. You get the idea there. Okay, so this is a complicated little thing. Probably should have drawn it bigger, but that's what it is. Here, right here, we're going to have a point O. Okay, so forces. Forces and moments. Um... Let's see, we need an arrow going this way. Okay, this one is 300 Newtons. Okay, then, oops, back here. Okay, here, and then let's speed this up a little bit. Here, let's put a horizontal reference line, and then this guy is at 60 degrees and this is 500 newtons then uh, over on the left side we have a force of 200 newtons and we have a moment about here of 600 Newton meters. And this, just to be clear, is um, in the XY plane. And 
let's see. So let's call this one, call this two, and call this three, the forces. Okay, let's get some dimensions on here. From here to here is 300 millimeters. From here to the ground, or that rigid attachment, is 400 millimeters. And then from, we need a couple horizontal dimensions here. From here, oops, to there. is 450 millimeters and again on the other side too four hundred fifty millimeters okay so find find the resultant force and moment. Okay. So, so the resultant force, which is what they're asking for, is the sum of all the forces. So let's break that into components. We're going to do x direction first. So the x component of the resultant is the sum of all the x components of all the forces. So um, we have two. We have um, force n number two which is 500 newtons times the cosine of 60 degrees plus 300 newtons, which comes out to 550 newtons. The resultant force in the y direction is the sum of all the forces in the y direction is 200 newtons plus 500 sine of 60 equals 630 newtons. Okay, so we're going to need to oppose these when we design for static equilibrium. So but for now, let's move on to finding the sum of our moments. Okay, so we need to sum all the moments, but we need to pick a location to find the result in the bout. Now, um, in the end, you don't want moments anywhere in the object. The moments should equal zero. This is statics. Right? Um, so, but for now, we're going to pick point O. Because you got to pick something. Okay, and that's the uh, point of rigid attachment. So we're going to we're going to um, find the resultant moment, and again, don't have for you. The resultant moment is the sum of all the moments. So, we got a few of these. There's four parts to this. First, we have a minus 200 
times 0 0.450, this is meters, k direction. Okay, so negative because it's clockwise. Remember our convention, counterclockwise positive, clockwise negative. Okay, so this is um, due to force one. Okay, next one, minus 500 cosine um, 60 times 0.7 K. And these are in um, units of Newton meters. All right, and this one is due to force two. Minus again, 300 times Point four zero zero. Okay, again. Due to force three. All right, so these are all clockwise, which gives the negative, right? Because they're summing moments. So we just put every, whatever sign is appropriate for the direction. And then lastly, um, there is the minus 600 Newton meters uh, which is the applied moment. Now when you when you do the algebra and sum all those up, the sum of the moments equals minus 985 Newton meters. Okay. So, remember we had Rx equal to 550 Newtons. Ry equal to 630 Newtons. Okay, so now we have to put our resultant force about the point with uh, about the point which you took the moment. So place your force, the resultant force, uh, resultant. Let me write that resultant force. at the point about which you took the sum of the moments. For that's going for us that's going to be point oh Okay. If you don't do that, you're causing another moment. All right, so um, quick sketch again here, rigid attachment, and I'm just going to freehand this one. Okay, here. Okay, so. Resultants are both positive, so it's going to be going off this way. And um, it's going to be clockwise. The resultant moment. So that's the resultant force and the resultant moment acting on this bracket. 
the convention you can you can put the moment anywhere right because the, it, it's a free vector but convention is to put it um, about the point that the uh, resultant vector um, uh, um, acts so let me just write that convention is to place um, the moment um, about the point about which the moments were summed. So now, for static equilibrium, um, you have to oppose these. 